This is Border Crossings. My name is Larry London, and I'm your host as we are joined by the duo of Mark Ballas and B.C. Jean, who are a couple both on and off the stage. Together they record as Alexander Jean, which is their middle names. Alexander Jean are on tour in support of their debut EP, High Head. Mark is a well-known celebrity in the U.S., but not for his voice, for his dance moves. An Emmy-winning dance choreographer and star of the very popular ABC TV show, Dancing with the Stars, Mark Vallis has won the television contest twice. His singing partner is his fiance, B.C. Jean, who is a singer and a songwriter who has penned one of Beyonce's biggest hits, If I Were a Boy. They say the songwriting is a 50-50 split, and while Mark is a perfectionist, B.C. takes a more laid-back approach. Today, we welcome Alexander Jean to our program. Stay tuned for Border Crossings. Hi, this is Larry London. Welcome to Border Crossings. Today, they're in our studio and on tour for a brand new album. It's their debut EP, and it's called Head High. We'd like to welcome uh, the team of Mark and BC to the Voice of America, and you call yourselves Alexander Jean. How, Correct. How did you come up with that? It's our middle names. Mm -hmm. It's pretty simple. It's Mark Alexander, and I'm BC Jean. Mm -hmm. Well, we welcome you to Washington. I understand it's not your first time Thank you. here. Probably yeah. not your first time either. Yeah, I've it's been a, to a couple times. It's a beautiful day today. It's gorgeous in Washington today. Mm -hmm. And Washington, so you too, I mean, tell me, you, you both come from showbiz backgrounds uh, yeah. your grandparents were into music and, and yeah. performed on many many stages and many many tv shows yeah and... for years for years they were signed to rca records for over 30 years and that's so strange because that's who i ended up signing with um mm -hmm. a few years ago and then uh yeah they were, my dad grew up in woodstock new york so they were into the arts and they were with uh perry como and fred waring and it's pretty uh interesting growing up with them they had a lot of talents that's how i started playing piano and vocal lessons my grandma was an operatic singer and classically trained they were amazing people and you started off as a songwriter yes well that's what i was first known for mm -hmm. i was always a singer and a i wrote poetry and then i can started taking my poetry and made them into pop format songs and then one day i wrote a song called if i were a boy mm. based I off i've of, heard of that yeah <laughs> based off of um a very true experience. It was basically a diary entry and a therapy session in mm -hmm. the studio. And it ended up being a, a magnet. The song was uh, what they would call an industry hit. And everyone was calling me. And it was the, it was, I got music, music 101 really quickly because I was new technically to the industry. I hadn't been signed yet. And all of a sudden everyone wanted to sign me. And then a girl named Beyonce wanted to sing it. So it was, um, then I was categorized as a songwriter, mm -hmm. which was really amazing. It opened a lot of doors for me and wrote with a lot of amazing producers and co-writers and for other artists, and mm -hmm. which led me into being, you know, my own artist as well. And when you wrote If I Were a Boy, you didn't write it with Beyonce in mind. No, no, definitely no Beyonce in mind. I would never <laughs> have imagined that at all. <laughs> How did that come to be? She called you one day and said, hey. She said, hey, B. I said, hey, B. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, she, I think the guy, Toby... Toby Gad, I wrote it with, I think he had a meeting with her and was playing some songs he had worked on and was trying to get some cuts with her. And he played my demo and she said, that's the one. And I wasn't trying to pitch my song. It was supposed to be my single. So when he called me, he said, I have the best news ever. Beyonce wants to sing your song. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's such a compliment. I knew it's a hit. Yay. It's going to be my hit. It's a hit. And he's like, well, for Beyonce, I go, no, no, it's my song. <laughs> like, why would Beyonce want to sing about my ex-boyfriend? <laughs> you know, it didn't, it didn't register. I was 20 years old. You know, I had no right. idea. So, you know, we went back and forth after my stubborn artist. You know, it was just, it was my song. It was my baby. But then after going back and forth, we struck a deal and then she uh, made my song a number one hit so you never know maybe no one would have ever heard it if it was me singing it and that's a great start <laughs> i mean to have beyonce sing a number one song you wrote it's and, not and too you're shabby. young and it's early on in your career my goodness there's yeah it helped nowhere to go but up it was wow. up. yeah yeah i got air conditioning in my car that was first <laughs> I, I could uh, afford my rent so that was good i didn't have to move back home yeah <laughs> and mark ballas is is the other half of alexander jean and, and mark people around the world know you from dancing with the stars mm -hmm. Although you've been a singer for for a while, I mean, music has been a passion of yours. Yeah, yeah. I started um, as a guitar player when I was very young. I picked up the guitar when I was nine, and uh, my dad was a flamenco player, and my grandmother was a flamenco dancer, so that was very prominent in the family. So I grew up around 
you know, that. And when I picked up the guitar, uh, my dad had me learn those techniques first and had me in classes. And, co- of course, I wanted to play Nirvana, you know. And he was like, not until you <laughs> learn this. Um, so, um, you know, I'm very grateful for that now because the flamenco technique is a lot of the technique I use. Mm-hmm. And then I started learning rock and blues later. Um, but uh, always into the arts as a kid. I loved theater. Uh, you know, I st- that's what kind of started entertainment for me was guitar playing and going to musical theater classes, you know, on the weekends, my grandma would take me and, you know, you had to sing, act and dance. And, um, you know, I was really into performing. So, um, you know, growing up, I was constantly doing both. And then, um, you know, I went to a theater school where you had to sing, dance, act and play an instrument to go. So that was awesome. I was there for eight years. I did the college as well afterwards. And then, um, after I graduated the college, my first uh, my first gig out of college was I I was in the Buddy Holly musical for ten months traveling the UK, mm-hmm. and um, it was awesome. Got to play Richie Valens and guitar in Act One and eight shows a week. You know, mm-hmm. get yourself there. It was like a grind tour. You know, but it was amazing theaters all over the UK. And then, uh, you know, the, I got a call from Dancing with the Stars later. It was like, you know, we got this show. Would you want to come out? And I was like, ooh. I don't know who would watch that. Who wants? To, who, <laughs> I was like, who would watch? Who would want to watch that? Yeah. Right. You know. So, um, you know, at the time, I just finished doing the Buddy Holly show, and I was only making like two hundred pounds a week. I was still living at home, my mom's, and playing gigs on the weekend, and doing pretty good. I was starting to get a little following on the acoustic singer songwriter circuit, but you know, I'd never been to Los Angeles or anything, so. When I got the offer, I was like, "All right, cool. Like, I'll go check it out. Like, why not?" You know, they call me on a Friday. And I moved out on a Sunday. Literally had nowhere to live and a backpack and I all I had was a backpack, suitcase, a guitar, and that was it. And then, you know, I've been on been a part of that cast for a while now. And um, you know, being out here I've I've been uh, constantly playing and um improving my guitar and and um writing songs and stuff and then B C and I met four years ago and we started this venture and um, it's been awesome yeah. mm-hmm. and the venture has led to a marriage I can tell by the rings yeah engaged, yeah oh, I engaged? got him an engagement, I have an engagement ring, ring as well that's Everyone. absolutely gorgeous thank you yeah. that's classy of you thank I mean you. not many girls give an engagement know, ring to a right? guy so that's yeah. very I got nice. it for Christmas I, I proposed on um, Thanksgiving the day, or day before. before Thanksgiving yeah and after I was like, okay, so for Christmas, no gift. Because I'm, I'm <laughs> tapped out. Because we don't got any more money. <laughs> I'm tapped out. So, you know, there's no gifts. And then um, we, every year in Houston, Texas, we have, uh, we play the white elephant game where the whole family. He has a really large Mexican Greek family. We're loud. Yeah. yeah so, They're wild. Um, Love it. I ended up winning, I think it was uh, whiskey and a box of cigars. Yeah. That's what I ended up winning, you know, <laughs> uh, which is wild. And as I, um, Later on, she was like, hey, did you look in the box? I was like, yeah, yeah, I saw it. She was like, did you look in the box? I was like, yeah, I looked in the box. It's whiskey. She's like, but did you look in the box? And I looked in the box, like, and she'd, the box. she'd put the in ring the- in the box. So. Oh. Like on the cigar. I was trying to think of a clever way of doing it the entire night, and then you know, throughout the night, the more we all had to drink, and I was like, okay, I can't keep drinking because I'm not forget. <laughs> I got yeah. to find a clever way of doing it. And then when he got the cigars, I was like, that's it. That's the that's how I'm going to do it. Yeah, so I was and like. he didn't understand. He got, when I saw he got it, upset. I was like, we said no gifts. We yeah, said no he gifts. Wasn't even, he didn't even say thank you. or <laughs> I he, was, he just was like, what is that? Because he drank what the whiskey this? first. Yeah. 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 Like, what is this? I was like, will you marry me? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a very romantic story. Yeah. That yeah. is beautiful. And, and how does a guy from Texas find such a beautiful girl from San Diego? Oh. How, did, how did it work out that way? Well, we met actually at a, a singer-songwriter night at a, a mutual friend's house. He did these, um, these Stage cool concerts yeah. yeah, in his living room, and he would do, like GoPro it all over the house, and, and people could buy tickets online. He did it once a month for a charity of choice. And I had done it a few times because I've known this guy quite a long time. I think it was your first time. Well, well the second I, I, time? I'd been to this guy's house to play guitar for a mutual friend of ours, Travis Garland, and when he heard me play guitar, I was like, man, you have to come play our our night i was like oh yeah i'd love to he's like it's in the living living room room. it's all the we sell tickets online all the money goes to charity i was like i would love to be a part of that so yeah the next week i came out to the next one i'm thinking living room jam would be like 20 20 people yeah Yeah. a lot of amazing people were playing that night and but i'm expecting this intimate night and when i get there it was jammed like it was like 200 people in there it's like a musical frat party like Mm. everyone's got red cups everyone's paying attention to the music but then they're back there's a huge party it's like a really fun event so when Monthly. I get when I when I get there, BC was already on stage and it was so busy I couldn't see her and she was kind of tucked around the corner, 
and I would just remember being completely mesmerized by her voice. She was halfway through her first song, and the room was just silent. Everyone was like in, you know. So I was standing at the back listening, and she did about four songs, and I was just blown away, seriously blown away. And then after BC said it was my turn next, so everyone kind of migrates to the kitchen, gets drinks while the next person sets up. Feels like and, that red cup. And by the time, <laughs> by the tone and sound of her voice, you know, I'm expecting to see someone who looks like Janis Joplin. You know, like maybe some dreads and like a bottle of whiskey, wearing a poncho. You know, I hide it. I put my bottle of whiskey in a Snapple <laughs> bottle so no one knows. <laughs> and um, you know, when I when I see her, I was thinking to myself, I'm like, no way, that voice came out of this cute little blonde. And you know, we didn't meet or anything. I just kind of plugged in and I played next. And I noticed that uh, BC was sitting right in front, so I was giving it a lot of oomph. everything you had. I was Lots giving it Electra. I was Lots giving of it. hip thrust, very fast. That's fingers. a lot. Of, yeah. I was wearing tiger leggings, tights. like Ooh, yeah, these tights, tights. hilarious. Ooh. Yeah, and um, <laughs> <laughs> so she sat and uh, stayed for my set, and afterwards. I just kind of came over and introduced myself, which I don't typically do. I'm, I can get shy, just going to be like, hey. Which he said that. He's I like, swear I don't to God. I do this. And so first, the first thing I said was, okay. Okay, here, here we go. <laughs> right? Heard that one before. So, All right, um, what do you want? <laughs> we exchanged info, and then, you know, I asked her out, and she kind of blew me off for a couple of months. And, you know, and I was she, down to work. I was like, well, we could write a song together. You're a super talented guy. And. I'm a super talented girl. I was like, I'm just trying to take you to get a See, drink. I was just foreshadowing all of this. That's it. That's it. Way back then, he just wanted to get some drinks and dinner. So you said flamenco, not for me. Yeah, <laughs> everyone no, so we, loves we, flamenco. We eventually went out. <laughs> everyone loves flamenco now. I, I love flamenco. I, know. I didn't know much about it until I met him. So it's been a. I loved learning about all that stuff. But no, we we went out like what two months after that after mm-hmm. we met. We were at dinner for like five and a half hours. So we had clearly got along really well and had a lot to talk there. about and That's great. he had kind eyes <laughs> and i liked kind eyes <laughs> well we're thrilled to have you guys in their studio alexander jean is the name of the collaboration soon to be husband and wife uh we're gonna ask if you wouldn't mind doing a song for us absolutely love to hear some music. thank right. you for sure, sure. what's this called sure we'll do uh, our most recent single it's called thief Like the man of my dreams There you go Saying all of the right things I'm just a girl At least that's what you think If love's a crime I'll rob you blind You hunt your prey like a carnival Thought that you were getting me Whoa. Just one taste Need you wanting more Baby I got you beat If you think you can escape But my claws are in too deep to get away You're in control At least that's what you'll say We both tell the story different You were mine from the beginning Hunt your prey like a carnival Thought that you were getting me just one taste leaves you wanting more Baby, I got you beat Honey, you didn't see What's hitting up my sleeves You took the bite and I took everything Cause I'm a heartbreaking thief to be punished so don't mess with the woman 
scorn, scorn. You had it coming, deserve to be punished. Don't mess with the woman, scorn, scorn. You had it coming, deserve to be punished. Don't mess with the woman, scorn, scorn, scorn. You had it coming, deserve to be punished. Your prey like a carnival. Thought that you would get me. Whoa. Just one taste leaves you wanting more. Baby, I got you beat. Got you beat. One thing you didn't see was it in all my sleeve. You took the bite, I took everything. Cause I'm a heartbreaking Right, sounding great, Thank Alexander you. Jean, and they are live here on Border Crossings. Now, what's the songwriting process like for you guys? I mean, you write most of the songs. Um, a- you know, we just we it just depends. Like every song's different. I when he's working on other stuff, I have sessions and I'll write songs. And if it's something that we like and we want to make our own, I'll bring it in and he can throw his little touches on it, or we'll pitch the songs and for other artists. But when we have been collaborating collaborating um, with each other, mainly I would say majority of the songs start with Mark because he's constantly working he does not stop practicing he loves it and um to keep those what do you say like the flamenco chops yeah, you like gotta I, I, you have to practice you gotta practice a lot so uh, you know i'm constantly at least an hour a day at least and um if i miss if i have to miss a day or something like i'll double up later so when you, you to keep your like all those strokes mm-hmm. tight you have to uh you know keep practicing so i'm constantly riffing and recording like little things down so when I usually get a riff that I like, or if she likes the riff, we'll start working on that, and she'll start thinking a top line. And I have to be more inspired. Mm-hmm. I'm more of a mood ring, I'd say, and you're more of a like scheduled. You got it. You like you're constantly come up, coming up with stuff, and I'm I'll be like, yeah. Or right you now, can just say, I'm always right. in the mood. He's always. In the mood. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always in the mood too. Yeah. Hey, Steve <laughs> McLean, it's a family a di- show. <laughs> <laughs> to write music. <laughs> to write music. Yeah. There you go. Now, this isn't your first album. You you worked with Dallas Austin a few years ago. I have, yeah. I've worked with, um, yeah, Dallas I worked with. I've worked with a lot of people. I was signed with Clive Davis at J Records, which then merged to RCA Sony. And I was there for a few years. And it was a great learning experience. I put out a couple singles. My album never got released. And that's what um, led me to leaving because we kind of just weren't, things weren't happening. Things kind of got put on hold. And I like to keep it moving. So I, um, I left there and took a couple years off just kind of getting back on my feet figured out exactly what I, my sound was, what I wanted to do, and it was perfect timing. That's when Mark and I met, and then about a year and a half in wasn't until we wrote our first song together. So we dated for a good chunk yeah. of time before we decided to... It wasn't even a planned thing, like, hey, let's be a duo. It was more of a... Um, Mark called me and said, babe, we never, we haven't written a song together. Like, let's write a duet and just for fun, let's get a bottle of wine and a pen and paper and sit on the couch and just... Do it old school. Do it old school and write something honest from the heart don't try to fit into any box which we do in this industry you kind of try to form to what's on the radio or mm-hmm. what you know the guys in the suits and ties in the offices want you to be like can you write can you sound like that like that Katy perry or like kesha <laughs> that happens a lot um so we kind of just wanted to do something real and and honest and um we wrote a song called head high mm-hmm. which ended up being the name of this ep and the name of our tour which is cool because it's full circle and we love we love things to be effortless and mm-hmm have meaning so um then we continued writing it once we said oh this is pretty cool this has an interesting sound we went to the studio recorded it and mark and i are super tough on ourselves we're not like what those people that think everything's super awesome <laughs> a lot of artists are i think right yeah. i think it depends but i think we- yeah for us it, we have to really be moved by it and um you know when we wrote the song again we just did it for fun we'd been I've been playing my own shows, and whenever BC would have shows, I would play guitar in her band. I would be the guitar player, and when I was doing stuff, we would always get BC up to sing, and that always ended up being everyone's mm. favorite part of the show. They're like, oh, man, when you got BC up, it's like, the two of you guys, that was cool. And yeah. So when we wrote this song, I mean, still, even after we wrote it, we weren't thinking anything. We were like, why don't we go record it for fun and just, just for us? Like, let's 
let's do it. I love the song. She loved the song. So the next week we went into the studio. Uh, we recorded it. We brought in all live instruments all live and instruments. people. So, Everything's hand played. Yeah, hand played percussion, live bass, um, a string quartet. Uh, you know, I did all the guitars. We even um, recorded harmonies like around one mic. We had yeah. like six of us at one point just singing yeah. live we, in the there's room. There's this uh, section in the song Head High where the lyric, hold your head high, just repeats. And it feels very empowering, kind of gospel-like. And mm-hmm. we uh, we have some friends from Memphis, Dottie and the girls. They're, they're called amazing. The Group. And they came in and the, the, the five of us just stood around one mic and we just did it all around one mic, like not trying to... You know, yeah, layer, so even, layer, and layer. Yeah, even no, if you mess up, it sounds cool because it just has vibe. It's about energy, yeah. So, And then after we recorded that, we listened back. And I remember listening and feeling like this is different. It's cool. I, I love this. Mm-hmm. And then I looked at her for, like, reassurance to see if, like, Goose is she on the bumps. same page? <laughs> the first and, check is goosebumps. We look at our arms. Yeah. bumps everywhere. We look at each other. We're like, this is cool. And then after that session, we were just thinking, you know what? Maybe we were meant to be here right now in this moment. And maybe we're meant to be doing this together, you know. We yeah. were brought together for a reason. And not only just to be, you know, together as in a relationship and, you know, a future marriage. But I think also to create music that's honest and real and something that means something to us that other people can relate to. And that's kind of what started this whole thing. And then we got heavy into writing more songs and gigging and yeah, getting out there. And like we'd go on vacation and it, we would write. And we wrote one of our songs from our EP there. And so it was constantly us hanging out, having dinner, and then we would write. It just becomes part of our life. It's second nature for us now. So might yeah. as well so we put spent, an EP together. I'd say we, <laughs> we locked into the studio for about a month and a half and recorded – you know, most of the tracks on the EP. And then when we were sitting down and thinking, what should we lead with? What would be the first song that we should start with? Um, BC had played me a demo of a song she'd written before we'd even met. It was called Roses and Violets. And that ended up being our lead single because I was just completely moved when I heard that song for the first time. And it was just a really scratch, rough demo. And I said to BC, I'm like, we should, we should lead with that. Because we listen to that song all the time just for enjoyment. And mm-hmm. it was, I feel like it was such a an important song for our relationship. There's mm-hmm. so much. I just, I remember it. Well, the second time we, after we met at the living room jam, mm-hmm. the next month they asked us to play again and I asked you to play Cajon for me because you told me you played, you were a drummer or something. You played Cajon. I played percussion, yeah. Yeah, so I called him and I was like, I'm going to send you this song. Can you uh, play the Cajon for me? And um, and that it That's ended how being it started. Roses and she sent me this demo and I was like, what is what is that song? She's like, oh, you know. And uh, the guy that she had written it with, Stefan Macchio, who's a musical genius and yeah, responsible phenomenal. for some amazing big top 40 songs right now, was who wrote it with mm-hmm. BC. And he was there too, to, and he actually played it live. And I played the Cajon because, again, going back to... Yeah, there's a picture. It's pretty awesome. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> oh, we should dig that one up. Yeah. Um, and then that that song just felt right to lead with. So, you know, we pulled it out of the demo pile. We put my guitars on it. We finished your vocal. Did all that in maybe six hours, I think, and it was ready to roll, you know. Yeah. And um, yet again, I th- I think I wrote that song about Mark, and I hadn't even met him yet. So uh, I think the no, stars but aligned. It's, I'm yeah. telling you, lots of things keep falling into place, and that's when you know you're at the right place at the right time. Mm. Yeah, and we released that song at the end of um, last year, and at the time, no one knew who Alexander Jean was. If you looked mm-hmm. us up, we were like you see on the front of the EP, it's like a cartoon. No right, one knew it was us. Yeah. yeah, and and that was really important to us because we wanted it to be about the music we didn't want it to be about the girl who's written yeah right the sure. guy who does yeah right. you know and no preconceived notions exactly when they listen to our music and when the song came out it you know it went up to number one on the singer songwriter chart uh here and in australia it went to uh number six on the pop chart and uh, charted in seven countries and you know we're doing this independently we're not doing this with any help whatsoever so for us that was like this is about the music. This is doing well because of the song, because mm-hmm. no one knew it was us until later. So, you know, so um, they still think I'm Alexander Jean. Like, they, yeah, they don't get that guy on the guitar. Yeah, <laughs> well, no, they <laughs> like his fans will be like, "Are you going to be at all the shows this summer?" And right. he's I'm like, like uh, yeah. "Yeah, it's my band." <laughs> <That's> <laughs> it. yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, how is that going to work for you when the TV show starts resuming? I mean, because I assume EP followed by album. You're working probably well, towards gonna, an album. I think we're going to do another EP. Actually, another EP? So, yeah, okay. we're we're, we're writing right now mm-hmm. got some good ones cooking up we got some really good ones right now so i think ep2 is going to be awesome so we're just we're on this road right we're on the road right now for this head high tour we're on our days off we're writing and coming mm-hmm. up with ideas and uh as soon as we get off we're going to um 
you know, get back in and start recording the next one. So will you tell Dancing with the Stars now? I don't Disney? know yet. You know, I mean, I, this this past season just finished, so and right. it's way too early to even assess what they're going to do or what the deal is yet. But, um, you know, you never know. I've done 18 seasons in a row. and uh, That's a lot. It is. You know, we'll Two see. mirror balls. Yeah, yeah, but, you know, I, I've always found a way to juggle and do both, and that was something that my, you know, my amazing parents instilled in me. It was like, you know, you don't have to do one thing. You don't have to be pigeonholed. You... You're allowed to be good at more than one thing, and I think in society a lot, a lot of the times now, if you're good at one thing, you can't possibly be good at another. And you know, I'm a, <laughs> I think I'm a big, I'm a big believer in encouraging kids growing up, you know, who are wanting to get into the arts, who are also smart, or who can play an instrument but also be good at a sport. That you can do both. That you're allowed to absolutely be good at more than one thing. Back in the day. In the entertainment industry, you had to be good at more than one thing. You know, like all the icons back in the day, they did it all. And, um, you know, I think that's such a, a big thing, and, and young people should be encouraged to do that. It seems that dancing would be more demanding than music. Music is creative, and mm. the music comes to your head, and mm. you can sit and put pen and paper and together, or whatever, and you can practice this at home, anywhere, in any room. I but think, the dancing requires big space and Yeah, I mean, I think physically, yes. Yeah. I mean, but I think music is just as... They're both there's apples and oranges, you know. Mm -hmm. They both revolve around the same thing, mm -hmm. but and they're both equally as difficult in other ways. You know, I think you have to be like she is so gifted with melody and and lyrics and finding the simplest way to say something so poignant and meaningful. You know, and I, uh, um, you know that that is really difficult when you sit down to think about how do I say this simple thing, but you know, make it hit home. That that's an art form and a talent, and it's uh, same thing with dancing too. And I think if anything, growing up being around my parents who were dancers and my dad was a guitar player, I think if anything that helped me as a musician, as when it came to musicality, uh, timing, um, knowing when to push, knowing when to pull back, and um, you know I'm really grateful for that background because it's allowed me to do things as a musician that I think you know not a lot of people can because they don't have that other mm -hmm. element of being able to. I guess, right with your body, I guess. So, um, mm -hmm. you know, I'm, I'm so glad that I was able to do both growing up. You know, I'm that's, very grateful to my parents. That's why you're that. so good. I think it, well, Mark produced this record and it was his first time doing that. We self produced each other vocally and we really were hands on completely. It was all us on this project. And that's the first time I've been so hands on on a project. You as well, I believe. Yeah. And watching him learn how to do this, he's so, such a natural. And the detail he has, the, the attention he has to every detail and the way he listens to it, like without your your understanding of dance and the way music makes you feel, I think it really does show in yeah. this music. For me personally, if it doesn't make me want to move or or it just has like this emotional then yeah, then something's missing <laughs> for me, you know. And and we intentionally brought in a lot of live musicians on this. I think it. it it's coming back now, I think, in music today. I but hope so. for a minute, there was a while where you know you didn't hear live strings as much or hand played percussion or well, it's just quicker sometimes. Yeah, so, yeah. So we intentionally wanted to take more time and mm -hmm. and make this EP. F you wanted to, I wanted people to feel like they were in the room with the musicians, like mm -hmm. you were listening to humans play it. You know, that was such a that was a big part of the sound, and I think that our sound is really raw, and and we want it to feel you know, human. Mm -hmm. So but hopefully you guys will perform on Dancing with the Stars because I know they Yeah, bring... we have, we have, yeah. Have you? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. Have, yeah, it was amazing. They they were um they've been great support and um a couple seasons ago Bindi Irwin and Derek actually danced to Roses and Violets, which was our first single. Mm -hmm. And that made people wonder they didn't know who we were. They just heard the song. Heard the song and then the song skyrocketed and then that's how it slowly mm -hmm. you know, they they found out who Alexander Jean was that way. But um, then we got to perform it live on the finale because they performed it again. It was really cool. Yeah. Great. But Are it you was teaching her how to dance. Sometimes. <laughs> sometimes. Sometimes I'll be cooking and he'll come in and spin me around and or I'll be mid conversation like Let's I do don't a know tango. what's happening. Yeah, I don't know what's happening. <laughs> I need to learn one day. She's natural nice. though. She's natural. Yeah, that's but right. You guys are so talented. You have so many talents, both of you. I mean, <laughs> as you. far as the songwriting, that's a tremendous skill and, and you know, singing, dancing, producing, that's, uh, it's all fantastic and it's evident on this EP. Thank you. And I know the EP, you know, took a lot of time to create yeah. with both of your busy schedules and, and it's great that it's out now. How's the tour been going and, and who, who's coming to see you perform? Who, who are your fans? The tour's been amazing. I yeah, mean, the tour's we're been still fun. right in the beginning of it, I feel like. And, um, 
I mean, it's been sponsored by Nicorette, too, we should mention, because they've been extremely yeah. helpful and amazing mm-hmm. people to work yeah, with. Yeah, I, I actually, um, I quit smoking two years ago with the help of Nicorette and Nicoderm. I, I grew up um, in the UK, and my grandma was a smoker, and my mom was a smoker, and all my friends were smokers. So I was just, you know, kind of... Hard to escape. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then, you know, when I got to my mid-20s, it was starting to, I could feel it. I was like, okay, now it's now it's bothering me. When you're a kid, you think you're invincible. I'm like, right. ah, it's not going to affect me, you know? So right. it got to a point where I was like, you know, the cold turkey thing, it's not working for me. I, I need I need help. So we reached out. I reached out to their company. I was like, look, I'd love to try some of your products. I've never tried anything like that. You know, I hear this and the other, you know, let me give it a shot. So I ended up using the patch because I'm so active all the time. I didn't want to think about it. Mm-hmm. And it, it worked. It really worked for me. And I've been... Um, Two years smoke free, and now I've kind of become a spokesperson for them um, because I'm such a advocate for trying to get people to live healthier. You know, it affected a lot of people in my life. You know, my uncle, my grandma, and, and um, you know, my grandmother is now smoke free too, and she smoked for years, and my mom is too. Mm, so, um, just trying to encourage people that are smokers to try and kick the habit and then young ones who think it's cool show them yeah. that it's not cool and it's actually cooler, cooler not, not to yeah. right. and uh, our shows are all ages too so it's good that we get to yeah. promote that's great the great. music great the message. love the, yeah and it's, it's cool. awesome you know to get a sponsor for this tour and being able to share our music and travel the states but have a sponsor for something that i'm genuinely i'm genuinely interested in this company right. and i'm genuinely care about you know trying to help people quit smoking and be healthier. So that is really nice to be able to talk about something that you really are passionate about. And you got to worry about secondhand smoke now that you have a child. In yes, the house. our, our son. you got to be careful there. <laughs> our son yeah. being the dog. He's not a fan. <laughs> yeah, he, he wouldn't here. like that anyway. So are you two wearing hats by accident? Is this uh, is this the look if the, the fans come out with the hats too? We've been up since 5 a.m. No oh, one wants that, to see what's <laughs> happening over here. <laughs> no, we uh, we we. We have been got, getting a few hats made by this guy named Hats by Alberto. He is yeah, he's amazing. The hat maker, he is phenomenal. If you're he's on Instagram Venice Beach. and you want a hat, at Hats by Alberto. He's like a, it turned out to be a good friend of ours now too. And I don't know, we it's kind of just become our thing. I've always worn hats and BC's always wore hats, and I love hats. We've always just it's just a thing. Just I, like, don't know, yeah, I don't know. It became a thing. thing. You're gonna have your thing. I mean, Farrell's yeah. got his hat, so you have your yeah. hat. Yeah, and he he. This is my first one that I got out of. From Alberto, Love it. Mark, I had this made. Mark for had birthday. it made for me, oh. and then I'm the queen of his heart. So that's what. Oh, the heart, there it is, queen of hearts. Yeah, that's yeah, like I our thing. So then I got him a king of heart. Oh, yeah. oh yeah. very but creative. Yeah, you too. The, the creativity doesn't stop. No. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're gonna ask if you do another song. For Absolutely, us. Yeah. sure. We'll do roses and violets for you guys. Oh, excellent. Something on my mind You're miles away But your heart feels close by The sun is in my eyes The sun is in my eyes We say love is blind But with you Roses are
Gorgeous. Thank you. Gorgeous. Thank Alexander you. Jean. Thank you. Mark and BC here live on The Voice of America. So uh, the tour continues for the rest of, of the year, uh, for yes. the summer and the year. And so then what? Are you going international touring? As- We'd love We'd to. We'd love to, yeah. I mean, you know, the, the goal would be to... Uh, Get back in the studio. I think put EP two out. I thought you were gonna say take over the world. I was like, yes, and yeah, that too. <laughs> That's on the list. You know, we'd love to, <laughs> you know, eventually end up on um, in an international tour, opening for somebody, or um, you know, being yeah. a support act, or we're open to a lot of things. We're, we're open to anything. We've, this has been a natural process, like I've said, and we'd like to keep it that way. Just mm-hmm. whatever comes, comes, and we're going to let, let that be. Mm-hmm. When's well, the wedding date? We're working that on hasn't, that. That, that, that will not be yet. <laughs> you know, we were so, like, on it. We were. We were on it. And then mixing happened, and then, mastering then this happened, this happened, touring happened. The career happened. got in the way. Yeah, yeah. exactly. You know, we're, we're, um, we're still figuring that out. Once we find the venue, then yeah, venue, it'll be a the nice, intimate been, evening. This has been a challenge, but we're getting there. <laughs> Do it on Dancing with the Stars. No, no, no. no, 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 no. <laughs> so, so people want to get the EP. Where do they go? I mean, it's available on iTunes and Amazon. Can they get yes. it from your website? Yeah, you yep. can You can get it on uh, Amazon, iTunes, Google Play. We're on Spotify. Uh, so, yeah, Spotify. We can do alexandergene.net. We also had hard copies made up. You know, no one does that anymore. You know, I remember back in the day. We say this at the show. We always ask everyone, remember when you used to tear the plastic That's off right. the and little kids, like, oh, the little kids are like what <laughs> <laughs> but um you know we have some hard copies made up that you can get at shows or you know i'm sure we'll put them up on the website as well and what is the website address? it's uh, alexandergene.net and i think then if our... you go to alexandergene.net it'll transfer you over to itunes i think that's how they do it yeah, yeah you can get it on there as well mm-hmm. um but you can um also we're on twitter and instagram and it's at underscore alexandergene underscore <laughs> underscore uh, uh we we I I have I'm my Facebook. We should her Facebook, but we should probably we're gonna I put don't together. Do Facebook. We're gonna put together a. Uh, I surely know. should. I'm so bad with the internet. I'm really I, bad. I, yeah, yeah. He's much better at it. It's well, a full-time job. Man. I yes, finally it figured out All Instagram. This stuff is responding. Yeah. I'm sure you respond to your fans too, right? I'm, yeah, yeah, we do. You know, we yeah. we love to. Um, we try and read through the comments and comment back and say hello and let people know how grateful we we are and you know interact and you know it's a, it's been an amazing tool i think but uh, at the same time it, you know it's it's tough you got to keep up with it and um but we're very grateful to everyone who follows us and we do our best to answer them all we really do <laughs> well i love the music you sound great thank and, you and thank congratulations you. on the new ep head high thank you Appreciate so much it. thank you guys for coming on the show thanks, thanks for, having for having us, us. It's alexander jean in our studios and this is border crossings right here on voa tv 